I recently replaced the oven in my kitchen by a new one and of course I take everything apart that leaves my house. So I also took that one apart and this video will show the components that I salvaged from there and some interesting aspects of it. The oven that broke down and that I threw out was a Privileg Pro Comfort 8200E. And these are all the components that I salvaged from there. I'm going to go over them piece by piece and then highlight some interesting aspects. So first we have some wiring and I usually don't salvage wiring from anything that I take apart, but this one is silicone wiring, I'm guessing for the temperature resistance. So it's hard to see on video, but it has like this smooth silk kind of touch to it. So this really might come in handy sometime and I'm going to keep that. Then we have a 6VA 6 volt transformer, 240 volts. Then we have a temperature sensor. I'm guessing this is a NTC type, it's two wires. We have an emergency shutdown temperature switch. These here are two of the front panel controls that set the stove temperatures. Those are actually quite interesting. I'm going to have a closer look later on. Some screws and fasteners. And these are the main PCBs. This one was the front panel and obviously it was under this cover so that the seven segment displays are uh, very good to read. And these here were on the inside. This here seems to be the main PCB unit. Power comes in at this side, L and N, so the phase and the neutral go through the variac and the X2 capacitor and through this fuse into this uh, transformer here. And on the secondary side of this transformer, we see a rectifier bridge uh, for um, 1N 4000 type diodes, 407 actually. And then we see a linear regulator. This is a 7905, so it regulates actually a negative voltage. Beyond there, we just see the filtering cap. Here are four relays that switch with 12 volts on the primary side. And we also see four triacs here, 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 and there. Over here is a ceramic resonator of four megahertz, which probably supplies the clock for the microcontroller on the bottom side. I'm not sure how well readable that is, but uh, the microcontroller is a ST brand 62P25C. So this is an 8-bit microcontroller with four kilobytes of flash. Over here we see a date code that says this was designed on the 20th of April 1999. So the whole thing is about 15 years old now. The front panel board is not really exciting. We see the seven segment displays. One is for the time and the other one for the temperature display. We see some LEDs and some switches. So nothing really exciting. And at the bottom side, we see what I think is yet another microcontroller. I believe this will also be an ST brand because it makes sense to use the same micro all over the place. And these two handle the seven segment display. So this one is a ULN 2003, which will probably handle the seven common cathodes of the seven segment display. What I think is the microcontroller has been covered up with a sticker that reads SDI3F127.hex. And below that it says 2808-0748-6 IND D1CAT. So I'm going to peel that away to see what kind of microcontroller it is. Yep, and this is also an ST brand microcontroller. It's an ST62T30B6. Date code is also 99 on this one. These two smaller PCBs are also rather uninteresting. We have a DC powered relay on this board with a freewheeling diode and just a beeper. On the bottom side, there's just some circuitry, which I guess is for the sound generation of the beeper. And that one is a bit more curious because this is the only relay which has 230 volts AC on the primary side, and it is switched with a triac. So we have a BC547 here, and a triac and a varistor again, which switch the primary side of the relay. So this doesn't achieve galvanic isolation. So the relay is obviously only used for power amplification. So at first I thought the microcontroller would just pick up some resistance values of potentiometers from the front panel. But 
for that these are too bulky and so I opened one of these up and what I found was actually kind of interesting. So there are two parts to this switch, one lower side down here which just closes two contacts permanently once the thing is engaged and they both open once it's disengaged. But up here is the interesting part. So we have a set screw up here. This appears to be a bimetallic switch. What a bimetallic switch is, is basically two metals with different thermal expansion coefficients slapped together so that when you run power through it and it heats up, the both metals, they expand differently and this causes an internal tension and so therefore it causes a movement of the whole thing. So if you look at the um, front panel switch, then you will see that this part here becomes uh, thicker or thinner depending on the rotational position. This means that this part, which makes contact with this part here, gives a predefined pretension on the bimetallic switch depending on how far it's turned. Then the bimetallic switch is engaged during power and through uh, the set point, you can actually regulate the amount of on or off time that the switch will exhibit. Therefore, you can change the amount of power that the stove actually gets by varying the duty cycle of the switch here. I've played around with this before and the bimetallic switch is actually actuated by 230 volts AC. So this is currently the off position. As you can see, or maybe can see, the two switches back here, they are both disengaged. So now I've rotated it a bit to the right and so both switches down here have now engaged. And this is the um, level with the least amount of output power. As you can see, the pretension that it gets here is the highest. When I rotate it further right so that um, the output power is increased, you will see that the pretension decreases. Up to this point, which is the maximum power point, there's a small nose that gives you uh, some tactile feedback so you don't immediately turn it back off. So what I've done here is solder a little indicator lamp to the pin four and pin two of the switch so that we should be able to see when the switch is actually engaged. And now I'm going to apply power to P1 and four of course using my isolation transformer. We should see the indicator lamp going on and off periodically depending on the switch position. So I've turned it to the lowest setting and turned the light off so you can better see the indicator light. And now I'll supply power and hopefully you can see some switching going on there. disconnected power and we'll set it to a higher setting so you can actually see more switching. So apparently the little notch at the highest power setting is uh, not only for tactile feedback but it also keeps the switch permanently engaged. So now I've uh, dialed it down just a notch below the highest power setting. These are some shots with my hillbilly macro lens attachment. I hope you enjoyed the teardown of my 15-year-old oven a bit and tune in the next time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.